So this question I could literally talk about for 45 minutes, okay? I'm going to try and stay as consolidated as possible. There is some value here. There's a little bit of a twist. Good learning point for you, okay? My first point of communication is the difference between a clotting factor issue and a platelet issue. You need to know platelet issues are generally more minor cutaneous findings, such as bruisability, petechiae, and also epistaxis, which is nose bleeding. Very high yield, okay? So platelet issues, minor cutaneous findings, petechiae, bruising, epistaxis, which is nose bleeding. Clotting factor issues are a little bit more severe. So uh, menorrhagia, so heavy uh, menstrual flow, okay? Uh, this is characteristic. They can say uh, very classically excessive bleeding after tooth extraction and also uh, hemarthrosis, bleeding into a joint, okay? So those are clotting factor issues versus uh, platelet issues. <clears throat> now, looking at the lab values here, uh, you can see the hemoglobin and hematocrit are low. Hemoglobin here at 9.5 grams per deciliter should be 12 to 17.5 as normal range in menstruating women or 13 to 17.5 grams per deciliter in non-menstruating women slash men. Hematocrit percentage-wise is going to be uh, three times that of hemoglobin almost always. This is consistent with what I've seen in NBME questions. Uh, so um, generally 42% plus or minus 5 should be what we see in menstruating women, 47% plus or minus 5 in non-menstruating women or men. Don't have to overanalyze the exact number, more just have as a, a subjective feel that if you're under 37, that's low. If you're in the 50s, that sounds like polycythemia. So this is consistent with iron deficiency anemia uh, because she has the heavy menstrual flow and the bruisability and epistaxis. Platelet count is normal at 260,000 per microliter. Normal range is 150 to 450,000. Bleeding time elevated at nine minutes. Normal range is two to seven minutes. PT, our prothrombin time is normal at 13 seconds. Normal range is 10 to 15 seconds. PTT, our partial thromboplastin time is normal at 35 seconds. Normal range is 25 to 40 seconds. And then of course it says platelet aggregation studies normal. You're probably like, okay, uh, not really sure what that's referring to, but I'll explain in a moment. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is really fucking dry right now. Um, so I'm gonna go through these answer choices, all right? Hemophilia A, wrong answer instantaneously because that's X-linked recessive. And that would have an isolated elevation in uh, PTT, okay? So it's not to say you couldn't have an obscure scenario where you have skewed X inactivation, but if they ever were to give you skewed, and X, skewed X inactivation and give you hemophilia in a female, they would make the focus of the question about her skewed X inactivation, okay? So it's just, it's not the case. You can eliminate it instantly if you know your inheritance patterns. And as I said, um, hemophilia, which is deficiency of factor VIII, uh, this would give us an elevated PTT in isolation because factor VIII is in the intrinsic pathway, all right, which is uh, represented by PTT. And uh, hemarthrosis is classic. So hemophilia A will present as generally a 12-year-old boy who has a bleeding into his knee joint and his PTT in isolation would be elevated. That's literally it, okay? Uh, that's the presentation, and you can give uh, desmopressin to, to treat, followed by factor eight. Um, a lot I can talk about, but I'm just going to try to stay consolidated and answer this fucking question that we're looking at, right? So looking at choice B, ITP, uh, this is a distractor, but is the wrong answer. So uh, for two reasons. Number one, patient has heavy menstrual flow. So this is a clotting factor issue, as we discussed. ITP is just referring to a platelet issue. So it's classically uh, epi epistaxis or bruisability slash petechiae. The other thing, in, in isolation, okay, you're not going to have the clotting factor presentation. The other uh, thing to note is that platelet aggregation studies are normal. The mechanism of ITP is almost always viral infection that leads to type 2 hypersensitivity, molecular mimicry, where antibodies are formed against glycoproteins 2B, 3A on platelets. Glycoproteins 2B, 3A mediate platelet aggregation, which is them sticking to each other, all right? Uh, we can see platelet aggregation studies are normal, so you know it's not ATP. Don't confuse that with platelet adhesion, which is which is to the platelet to the endothelium, which is via glycoprotein 1B. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. 
So it's you can eliminate ITP, but ITP will present two ways on USMLE. Uh, maybe two thirds to three quarters of your questions are going to be a school age kid uh, with viral infection followed by epistaxis. Okay, and then it's an isolated elevation in bleeding time and platelets are decreased. Um, they don't have to mention the viral infection explicitly. Just think about how Corona is often asymptomatic, right? So they can just say, "Kid has bleeding. Uh, he has he has epistaxis. Bleeding times increased, and it's just ITP." Or the answer would just be antibodies against glycoproteins 2B3A, which I've made other questions on. Uh, and then the other way that ITP can present a third to or a quarter to a third of the time would be a woman in her. 30s or 40s with random bruising, all right? And once again, they won't mention viral infection. Random bruising, high yield for family medicine especially. So if they give you a woman who's, let's say, 34 years old, she has bruises at different stages of healing, and her bleeding time is elevated, answer ITP. Bleeding time normal, answer domestic abuse, all right? And then you treat ITP with steroids, followed by IVIG, followed by splenectomy, definitive. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, this is a hard one. Uh, this is uh, almost always caused by antibodies to a protein called ADAMTS13. can be caused by deficiency of the protein, but it's usually antibodies against ADAMTS13, which is a, a matrix metalloproteinase that breaks down von Willebrand factor multimers. So uh, there can be numerous precip uh, precipitants for a TTP, a TTP episode, but uh, long story short is you're going to have uh, Adam TS13 antibodies against it. You're not going to be able to break down von Willebrand factor multimers. And uh, that means you're going to have increased uh, platelet clumps within your vessels. And that's going to cause shearing of RBCs as they fly past the platelet clumps, leading to schistocytes. Okay, So you're going to have schistocytosis and you're going to have thrombocytopenia. And you're going to have renal insufficiency generally because uh, the problem will occur in the uh, renal afferent arterioles. And you can also get fever and neurologic dysfunction. A lot I can fucking talk about, okay? I can do a whole like 15-minute discussion on TTP, but I'm trying to just stay consolidated. TTP is going to be the answer in quick summary when you have a pentad of thrombocytopenia, uh, schistocytosis, uh, renal insufficiency, fever, neurologic dysfunction, and you're gonna, um, you just need to know the mechanism is antibodies against Adam TS13. Okay, now vitamin K deficiency. Uh, this would give you an elevation of PT and PTT, which we clearly don't have here, and bleeding time would be normal. So vitamin K is a cofactor for an enzyme called gamma glutamyl carboxylase which is going to uh, activate our clotting factors 2, 7, 9, 10, and anti-clotting proteins, C and S. So uh, those clotting factors are part of both the intrinsic and extrinsic pathway. 7 and 10, or 7 is of extrinsic, 10 and uh, 2 are of the shared pathway, 9 of just the intrinsic pathway. But the long story short is isolated increase in PT and PTT for vitamin K deficiency and your bleeding time would be normal. So it's just not the right answer here. But vitamin K deficiency will be in two, generally two presentations on the step. The first one's going to be a neonate who is bleeding from the umbilical stump. The second is going to be someone who's been on uh, broad spectrum antibiotics for probably six weeks and you've depleted their gut flora and because that's where vitamin K is produced. Um, and vitamin K, just know that you get that from green, dark green leafy vegetables. They're cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts, uh, cabbage, cauliflower, okay, and broccoli. Uh, von Willebrand disease, this is our correct answer. So von Willebrand disease is, von Willebrand factor is, uh, the, the purpose of von Willebrand factor is to bridge glycoprotein 1B on platelets to vascular endothelium slash underlying collagen. So von Willebrand factor is necessary for platelet adhesion, okay? It has zero to do with platelet aggregation, which as we said before is glycoproteins 2B3A. So it makes sense that platelet aggregation studies are normal, right? Platelet aggregation 2B3A, but von Willebrand factor is mediating adhesion. It connects 
It bridges glycoprotein 1B on the platelet to underlying collagen slash vascular endothelium. So we have a normal platelet aggregation studies. We have normal platelet aggregation studies in von Willebrand disease. Uh, this is something I've seen in NBME questions. Now, you're always going to have an elevated bleeding time simply because we have defective platelet adhesion. Now, this is where students are going to get fucked up. They're going to say, Michael, but isn't uh, PTT elevated in von Willebrand disease? Only about 50% of the time, okay? So if you memorize that there should be an increase in bleeding time and PTT, you're going to get questions wrong because on NBME, PTT is only, only elevated about half the time. This is because von Willebrand has an ancillary function, a secondary function of helping to stabilize factor eight in plasma, which is part of the intrinsic pathway. But that's just it. It's an ancillary slash secondary function. It's not the primary function of von Willebrand factor. So whilst your bleeding time is always going to be elevated uh, because you have defective platelet adhesion 100% of the time, it's not always the case that this lesser ability to stabilize factor eight in plasma is going to result in elevated PTT. It's not always the case that that will occur. So only about 50% of your von Willebrand disease questions, you're going to have an elevated uh, PTT. So this is a really, really important take home slash twist, okay, that you can have an isolated, eleva an isolated elevation and bleeding time in von Willebrand disease half the time, all right? Um, and the vignette is always going to give you, it's autosomal dominant, and the vignette is always going to give you uh, a mix of one clotting factor issue and a platelet issue. And here we have our heavy menstrual flow. They could have said uh, easy, or sorry, uh, increased bleeding with tooth extraction or excessive bleeding with tooth extraction plus petechiae or epistaxis, but they gave you one clotting factor issue, one platelet issue, all right? Uh, I've also seen it where they'll say, like, for example, 17-year-old girl had excessive bleeding after tooth extraction. They don't mention the bleeding time. And they say the PT and PTT are normal, but they tell you that she cut her finger and it took longer to stop bleeding than expected. So that's them essentially just telling you the bleeding time is increased. So that's it for this question, okay? Obviously, hemonc discussion, we could do a 90-minute oral presentation with every little detail. Um, but von Willebrand disease, we can treat with desmopressin, all right? That'll actually... Uh, increase von Willebrand uh, factor release from vascular endothelium. Um, once again, a lot we can chat about, but uh, your take-home point is that for this, for von Willebrand disease, one clotting factor issue, one platelet issue in the vignette, it's autosomal dominant, and your bleeding time is always increased, and your, your PTT only increased half the time, okay? And your platelet aggregation studies are normal because von Willebrand factor is merely responsible for platelet adhesion, okay? That's it.